Recently, Google and the DeepMind team released Gemini and a whole bunch of other generative AI tools, including Imogen 2, their second generation diffusion image generator. Let's take a look at it. Imogen 2 is billed as Google's most advanced text to image technology. And you can see some examples here on the right hand side. The quality looks significantly better than Imogen 1. Let's jump over and check Imogen 1 out. If you look over here, you can see Imogen 1 it said unprecedented photorealism. I'll kind of disagree with this. This looks more like the very first releases of Stable Diffusion or even Dolly 2, maybe. It's just not very high quality. You can see some of these results. A majestic oil painting of a raccoon queen wearing red French royal gown. They just, they look like they're almost made out of clay. Or it's like some sort of claymation or animation. It's not really high quality photographic stuff that we're used to seeing from things like Dolly 3 or Stable Diffusion XL or even Mid Journey. Imogen 2 though looks like it's quite a big step up. You can see a lot of the examples here. Some of them look like they're pretty decent photographic quality. Let's look at some of the technology that goes on behind this. Now they say it's their most advanced diffusion technology delivering high quality photorealistic outputs that are closely aligned and consistent with the user's prompts. So I think a lot of these diffusion models, what they're doing is they're really getting better at understanding the input that you're putting into it. So the actual prompt itself and then generating something that's a lot more coherent, a lot more aligned with what you were looking for. Looking at this photo, if I saw this, I wouldn't actually know that this wasn't a real photo. So the prompt is a shot of a 32 year old female, up and coming conservationist in a jungle, athletic with short curly hair and a warm smile. I don't know why up and coming conservationist is there. It's kind of an odd thing to add to a prompt, but it looks like it works and it, it looks good. Now, when we don't know what size images this was trained on, there's no explanation to that down in the, the page information, but I can tell you that this is a 600 by 600 image for what it's worth. So I don't know if it's quite as high a resolution as some of the models that are out there now, but this at least looks fairly reasonable quality. The lighting's really nice, the shadows, everything else. It looks pretty realistic. This one, uh, the prompt is a jellyfish on a dark blue background. I will say there's not a tremendous amount of detail in the jellyfish here. I think you know, even Dolly and a lot of the diffusion models do a much better job. This looks a little bit too, I don't know, washed out and blurred for my liking, but you know, still there. And then this one, a small canvas oil painting of an orange on a chopping board, lights passing through orange segments, causing the orange light across part of the chopping board. Matches the aesthetic pretty well. It's a nice image. So they, they build this as advanced and improved image caption understanding. Kind of what we were talking about before. So to help create higher quality and more accurate images that better align to a user's prompt, further description was added to image captions and images to training data set. I have a whole video on how stable diffusion and generative AI images work. So you might want to check that out. But the gist of it is when you're doing the training of these data sets, you're kind of building out all the images that are going to go into the model. What you do is you assign keywords to the images. That's going to help train the model so that it knows that okay, this image of a bee sitting on a hot tub is a bee sitting on a hot tub. If it didn't have those matches between the words and the image, it wouldn't know how to generate those later on when somebody gives a text to image prompt. But in this case, they took it a step further. And instead of just providing kind of short tokens and keywords, they added further descriptions. And so now it's going to have a better understanding, a more full understanding of the images that it's going to generate based on the descriptions that were added to the training set. So you can think of this as the better the data that goes into the model, more than likely the better the data that comes out of the model is going to be. And here we can see a couple of examples. So for this image, they actually gave a hymn. It's soft pearl the streams, the birds renew their notes, and through the air, their mingled music float. A nice kind of oil painting that represents that poem. Similarly, this is another one. It looks like a whale in the sea with a whole bunch of fish swimming around it. And then finally we have this of a bird. So the robin flew from its swinging spray of ivy on the top of the wall and opened his beak and sang aloud. So it's nice that they're able to get more descriptive. You're able to pair images more readily with text. So you could think of this as you're writing a story in a book and it's able to just automatically illustrate what's being told in the story because of these rich understandings of how text and images relate to one another. And the gist of it is that it purports to have more realistic image generation 
because of all these things. Imogen 2's data set and model advances have delivered improvements in many of the areas that text-to-image tools often struggle with, including rendering realistic hands and human faces and keeping images free of distracting visual artifacts. You'll know a lot of stable diffusion systems and generative AI art has a really tough time with hands and artifacts and images. A lot of the newer models have gotten much better at that, but you can see these two pictures here, actually three that have hands. The hands look pretty good. This is a cool feature, fluid style conditioning. So you can actually provide a reference image and then all of the output that's generated is sort of going to follow that aesthetic of that reference image that you provided. So in this case, you could provide a picture of sort of this floral image, this floral texture, and then everything you generate, whether it's this mid-century sideboard, a t-shirt, a pillow, it's gonna carry over that aesthetic to it. Imagen 2 supports advanced in-painting and out-painting. This is great if you wanna either add images or objects to a scene. So if you've got this sort of studio environment, you wanna add some additional things to it, like a floating bookshelf, you can do that. Or if you wanna take something out of a scene, you can also do that. And then this last part, probably my least favorite, responsible by design. This means it's going to be highly censored. So they say, before we release capabilities to users, we conduct robust safety testing. So what that means is, if you ask it to generate a crystal skull, it's not going to, just like being image search. Yeah, and this is kind of why I like running diffusion models on my own hardware at home, because you don't have somebody holding your hand and telling you what you can and can't do. Now, Imagen 2 is going to be built into a lot of different products across Google's entire suite of offerings, including things like Office. It's available via API now, but you can't access it outside of that. And obviously, as soon as it's available, I'm going to take it, I'm going to compare it and benchmark it against Dolly 3 Midjourney, my own stable diffusion setup on my home PC, see who comes out ahead of things. And with the launch of Imagen 2 and even things like Gemini, Google's really just playing catch up with OpenAI. Dolly 3 and GPT-4 are both superior in a lot of ways to what's being released by Google. So they're pouring all their resources to make this a successful launch. Time will tell and we'll see how it pans out. I'm of course going to run these through a gambit of tests as soon as they're available to the masses. I'll let you know how it comes out. Let me know what you think down in the comments below and what you want me to test as soon as this is available. As always, hit that like and subscribe button. I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech AI. We'll catch you next time.